Could the strings of string theory be light spheres of electromagnetic radiation? People say the mathematics of string theory is very beautiful, but could the mathematics be right and the geometry be wrong? In this theory, it is the emission and absorption of light from one atom to another that forms the forward momentum of time, continuously creating the broken symmetry of space-time. Light always takes the simplest and most efficient path, expanding out in all directions, forming light spheres. The polarization of the light will be the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, creating quantum entanglement and the symmetry and geometry of space-time. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, all atoms radiate electromagnetic radiation continuously, even the atoms of an observer. The atoms bond together and then create their own space-time geometry and symmetry in unison. Just like ripples on a pond, each atom will radiate out light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Each wave front will create a probability of a future event. When a wave front comes in contact with the electrons on the surface of another atom, it will create a new moment in time and space in the form of a photon-electron coupling. This has nothing to do with consciousness. All atoms create their own space-time geometry. But it is because life, in the form of an observer, can choose when and where to collapse the wave function, that we have free will. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time, forming its own broken symmetry of its own evolutionary path. The forward momentum of light is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. To put this very simply, time moves at the speed of light and energy and mass slow it down to form their own space-time geometry. Therefore the observer will collapse the wave function, creating his or her own independent reality of time and space. This is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, using the terminology of quantum mechanics, the wave-particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time geometry. The best way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. When the light reaches the screen with the two slits, the photons will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits. Interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments of time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. At that moment in time, the interference pattern disappears, because to observe the photon, we have to physically create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wave front into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. That the wave front never had before the collapse. This has nothing to do with consciousness. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state, unless acted upon by an external force. It is the outward momentum of electromagnetic radiation that forms the inward force of gravity. The radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an unbalanced force, therefore all objects resonate together. Because the atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects. Therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. Therefore, the greater the mass of atoms, the stronger the gravitational force. The gravitational field will propagate at the speed of light. Therefore, there is no instantaneous action at a distance. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus, the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. The symmetry and geometry of light 
forming the curvature of space-time is the key to understanding the reality of quantum mechanics. Only energy will be transferred by electromagnetic radiation, giving each photon of energy its own unique position in space and time. When any object performs an action changing its position and momentum, it will also change the frequency of electromagnetic radiation. The Planck constant will then change relative to that frequency. This will give the object a unique position in time and space, and this is the reason why we have Einstein's theories on relativity. To fully understand this, we need to look not just down into the probability of the quantum world of the atoms, but also up into the beauty of the night sky. If we look up at the stars, we can see back in time, through light years of space, the further we look, the further back in time we see. The position of the observer within the universe makes no difference. Whatever planet or galaxy he observes from, he will see the universe expanding and be able to look back in time, in all directions. The observer is the only true reference frame. This is because he is at the centre of his own created space-time geometry, at the centre of his own broken symmetry. This process of looking back in time can be put in reverse, and the closer we look at an object, the less time will elapse. When we look down into an atom, we can see time-dependent quantum mechanics, when the atoms bond together, forming interference patterns of their own. But when we zoom in to an individual atom, we find time-independent quantum mechanics, and there is no flow or arrow of time, and all we have is an electron cloud of probability. The probability of the uncertainty principle is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. We can see that time is a thing in itself because we have time dilation when objects accelerate towards the speed of light. We also have gravitational time dilation around objects of great mass that can be seen as gravitational redshift in the electromagnetic spectrum. In quantum atom theory, it is because the atoms can distort the geometry of space-time that we have electromagnetic fields. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for electric fields, and time varying electric fields is a source of the magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variation, the atoms themselves. The magnetic fields are always at right angles to the electric fields, forming a local space-time symmetry and geometry that will spiral out, creating the visual and mathematical patterns of our universe. The greater the angle in space, the greater the curvature of space-time, the stronger the electromagnetic field at that point in space and at that moment in time. This can be seen as sparks of light associated with static electricity. The atoms will even distort the geometry of space-time, creating electrostatic discharge in the form of lightning. In this theory, it is only logical that the wonders of modern electronics are based on the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. This is because electric charge is quantized and we generate electrical power mainly by changing magnetic fields or moving a conductor through a magnetic field. This will distort the geometry of space and time, leading to the electromagnetic induction of our own created space-time, in other words, electricity. The quantum of quantum physics is a variable of time, forming the geometry and symmetry of space-time. The invisible dimensions of string theory are different space-times within our own one universe forming Einstein's curvature of space-time. This can be seen because the curvature of space-time has left something behind in the curvature of solid objects. There are no straight lines in nature, from the curvature of the moon, to the bow of the tree, to the growth rings of the tree itself. Everywhere we look we can see, within a diversity of nature, the same common symmetry, the same guiding force. This can only be because of an underlying symmetry, and a continuous process of symmetry breaking. The same patterns can be seen in seashells and spiral galaxies, and throughout nature, because the same process governed the evolution of life. Early life forms moved towards the light, forming imperfections of their own broken symmetry.